<clears throat> Hi there, it's David O. Uh, here in Thornhill. Uh, we're approaching our last Shabbos here and then heading home to sunny Carmiel. It's been raining a lot. Everything is very, very green here. Uh, it's lovely. Um, we're in the on a fairly busy street. Right now it's quiet, but don't be surprised if you hear cars zooming by. So here we are. Um, approaching the middle of August, but approaching the end of Av and entering now this Sunday into Elul. It's Parsha A, Parsha uh, in, which, in which Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking to the people just prior to entering the land. Uh, I, I'm not going to go over in detail all of the things that he speaks about, but I'll mention some of them. And then I want to move on to a subject coming forward very soon. In this parsha, uh, it's very clear that Moshe is anticipating the crossing of the Yardane, even though he will not be part of it, as he's learned, painfully learned. Uh, he won't be crossing the Jordan into the Promised Land, but he needs to prepare the people uh, for the entrance into the land, which will be a major change from the 40 years in the wilderness, in the Midbar. <clears throat> It'll be a place in which miracles will continue, but uh, people will have to do things themselves as well. Uh, and the whole kind of nature and environment in which they are living, the nature of the environment in which they are living is about to change radically. Uh, rather than a wilderness, it's a beautiful land of hills and valleys. It is inhabited. Uh, by idol worshippers, and the, and those idol worshippers will have many temptations for the Jewish people, uh, some of which they've suffered through already in the wilderness with the Midianite women um, and the practices of foreign gods. Um, so they're warned at the beginning about the blessings and the curses that will come depending on their behavior. Uh, and then God, Moshe expresses, he, he tells the people, um, the, the land itself is sanctified and it has a special status and do not allow yourself to be tempted uh, by foreign gods. In fact, destroy all the remnants of the worship of idols. Many times in this parsha uh, are the Jews told about the things that will happen uh, where God will rest his name, is the expression. A name is the essence of an entity. God will rest his essence in the place he has chosen, meaning Yerushalayim. That's where sacrifices will be brought, that's where uh, an altar is appropriate to build, etc. He talks about testing a prophet, that even if a prophet prophesies successfully and well, that if he leads people away from the dictates of Torah, <clears throat> that you should know that if he leads them away from the dictates of Torah, that he is a false prophet and should in fact be destroyed. Uh, there's a great deal about leading astray, about eating kosher animals, um, about not cooking a kid in its mother's milk, many things like this. What is the point of it? The point of it is just as we prepare for Aliyah when we leave our homes in Chutz Arts in, in the diaspora uh, to go to Eretz Yisrael, some of us go on the run, but some of us had the privilege of preparing. So Moshe is preparing them for their Aliyah into the land itself. And what we realize is preparation is good, it's important. I warned you it would be busy traffic. I'm right outside our home here in Thornhill. Uh, and even though uh, some have time, some don't have time, whatever preparation you can do before you make Aliyah is absolutely critical. Do whatever research you can, Ask people you know who've made Aliyah, ask people you know who've made Aliyah and failed and come back, you know, and maybe we'll try again. 
what it is that you should know. Find out the difference between the north and the south and the center of Israel. You know, research the, the medical plans, uh, banking, all those kind of things. A lot of this you can find out through Nefesh Benefesh's web website, very helpful. Uh, but also word of mouth is very, very important. So if you have friends that are already made Aliyah, you know, question them, ask them, uh, drain their brains, so to speak, on this topic. Uh, learn, the, learn the lesson of this Parsha, which is Moshe is telling them this is not like someplace else you've been to. This is not Chicago, this is not Minneapolis, this is not Winnipeg. This is Eretz Yisrael, a holy land, and with it comes many responsibilities and many, many, many blessings. So prepare, even if you're just visiting, prepare. And speaking of preparation, we're now uh, two months, really 60 days outside of Rosh Hashanah, the new year. Um, and for us, this should always be a time of reflection, of thought, of change, of tshuva, of returning to our own essence. It's very, very important. Uh, the prophet says, seek God where he can be found. So this actually is a reference to time as well as place. And this is the time where God can be found. Now I want to, this is a little confusing um, because it's confusing because God is always there. So what does it mean this is the time that he can be found or the place where he can be found? He is everywhere and he is at all times. From the beginning of time to the end of time, it's his creation. So what, is, what does it mean uh, to seek him at this time? I'll tell you, uh, it's a famous board, and perhaps I'll end with this. There's an idea that the king operates from his throne room. It's natural, he's royal, right? But periodically, maybe at least once a year, he wants to tour his kingdom. So he tells his servants, hitch up the royal um, uh, coach and the horses, and we're going to go and tour the kingdom. And he travels from town to town, city to city, village to village. And he's actually, you know, not unlike a candidate touring. He's shaking hands, he's kissing babies, but mostly he's asking the common man, are you happy in my kingdom? What is it we should change? What changes should we make it will make your life a better life in my kingdom. And people who are awed by the, the, the castle and the, the, the capital city actually get to see the king in person. And they say, your majesty, we have potholes. Or your majesty, you know, our mayor is corrupt. You know, or your majesty, perhaps you could lower the grain taxes. Things like that. Or they say, Your Majesty, things are wonderful. It's very good and we're very blessed to have you as our king. So those are some of the things that might happen. And what is the king's response? He thanks the common man. He says, very good. He said, by the way, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Here is my calling card, my business card. It says king on it. Should you ever need anything, present this at the palace and they will, uh, they, they will see you to the throne room and I'd be delighted to see you in the capital city as well. And then he gets back in his coach and off they go to the next stop. Comes six months later and the farmer has had a very bad time. He, he has a cruel landlord, whatever, right? What does he do? He goes to the capital city. He remembers. I have a friend in the king. But will he really see me? I mean, this was here in the fields, but... So he goes to the king, and he gets to the... He's on the outskirts of the capital city, and he sees the, the military protecting the city, and he sees 
the, the castle and the moat and the gates and he's kind of scared. But he comes to the front gate and the guard, by the way, the guards in the capital city and in the castle are always the most impressive. They have the best uniforms. They're the biggest, strongest, tallest uh, soldiers in the king's army. So it's an intimidating thing. But he goes to the capital city, and he goes to the front gate where the guard is, and the guard says, can I help you, sir? And he kind of looks down at this fellow who is, you know, he's dressed as a farmer. It's his best clothes, but still, he's a farmer. And he said, you know, I met the king six months ago, and he told me if I ever wanted to come visit, just to present this to you. And he gives the card to the fellow. Now, the interesting thing is the guard, although he's very gruff, has seen this before. And he said, oh yes, the king probably does want to see you very much. Uh, let me call an escort. And he's escorted through huge doors, across the moat, more doors, down corridors, around. You know, it's very, you know, everywhere there's huge portraits of kings, more guards with spears and swords. And finally, two very big, well-dressed guards open these giant doors to the throne room. And there's the king sitting in his throne with his crown on his head. And he looks and he says to the fellow, he says, we've met before, haven't we? And the farmer says, yes, we have. And he shows the calling card to the king and he says, yes, I remember. I think it was wheat that you were growing, am I right? farmer says, yes, your majesty. And the king says, so if you've come to me, there must be some reason. Is there something I can do to help you? And the farmer realizes he doesn't have to remind the king very much. And he says, yes, your majesty, since I saw you last, this uh, I've had some terrible difficulties with my landlord uh, he, he took my horse and uh, my farming implements and I, I can barely make ends meet and we're suffering terribly uh, my, my son is no longer able to learn very much because he has to help me all the time if only I could have a horse if only I could have my farm implements back if, if you could help me with this, that would be a tremendous, uh, tremendous gift. The king looks at his scribe and he says, take this man out, whatever he needs, write it down, make sure that it's done. By the time he gets home, everything he's asked for has been returned in doubles. And who's waiting for him at the front gate? His landlord with an apology. I didn't know, I didn't know your relationship with his majesty. I got a phone call. I, I got a phone call and, uh, well, it wasn't a phone call. It was a carrier pigeon call. Uh, and his majesty has said that I've been appointed to make sure everything is well with you. So please, the next time you see him, tell him about this conversation. Um, and I wish you well, and I want to increase your land holdings as well. And the farmer is very grateful. Uh, everything is turned around, uh, and he feels very good. What is this about? The farmer is you and I. The king is his majesty. The field is the month of Elul, which begins on, on this Sunday. And in this field is our opportunity to meet with the king directly, to speak to him about our issues that we might have, things we might have done wrong, things we might have done right, to try to examine how we can change prior to this day of judgment, which comes at the beginning of Tishrei a month later. And we know that the king is listening at this time. So take this time right, to make peace with Hashem, to make peace with your neighbors,
your brothers, your friends, and to make peace with yourself. Where A is a time to prepare for the crossing of the Jordan into the Promised Land. It is our opportunity to prepare for the Day of Judgment this time. Wishing you well, David O. Stryker, <clears throat> David O. Stryker from Thornhill, Ontario.